What's going on guys? Just wanted to remind you about the Battle for Texas happening on May the 6th. Erica and I are going to be there live, so be sure you're following us on our Twitter, on our Instagram for all of our updates, and we hope to see you there. Hello and welcome back to CXP on campus. Jacob Brothers here, Erica Sidora there, and we are joined by a very special guest. We are talking to Marco Roig, the team captain of the ASU Overwatch team. Marco, thank you so much for coming on. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's awesome. Absolutely. And so you guys have been in the headlines a little bit recently because you guys had a coaching session with David Pay, the ex the ex LA Gladiators coach. And so it, it was his first time coaching a uh, college team. And so just starting from the top, how how is a coaching session structured? Um well, so we kind of went in uh with all different views of what it could be because we honestly had no clue. Um, and eventually it just came in and he was like, okay, you guys are 3k players, so I can't do it to the level that I would, you know, normally. So we just focused on rush and it was purely rush. It started, I think, talking about, uh, communications and then it started talking a little bit about positioning and then like what the role of each kind of player should have in the, uh, team call. So it was, it's honestly really cool. It's brought a lot of stuff that none of us have even like thought about before so i want to piggyback off of that question were there any insights that pay gave to you that you were like oh i haven't thought about that or maybe some differences where you clashed ideas well um i mean funny you say that we he did ask us for like hey give us a fight plan you know and we'd give something and he's like well unfortunately that's wrong <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a good idea but it's better to have a bad idea than no idea at all. So um, it was kind of funny, you know, getting that. Um, but like, I guess uh, some things that were just kind of new is like, especially for like a Ryan player is uh, having a Ryan player not really focus on the Ryan 1v1 and more just get our Ryan heart to the back line to just decimate the back line first. And that's how we win the fight rather than kind of just the 1v1 there. And that, that was kind of just something interesting and really changed how we played, so. Cool. Uh, would you consider the experience as positive overall? Oh, 100%. 100%. Um, I mean, it was, it's definitely an interesting season and semester to kind of put this in. But I think, like, if you were to compare us from, like, the beginning of the season to middle to deep pay coaching and then after, uh, it's just a steady climb up, and that was a big jump. So I do want to ask, since this is a particular thing I read in the article, you don't have a coach? No, no, um, we, we don't actually. Uh, we tried finding a student coach, but nobody really signed up for it. I mean, oh well. So we kind of just uh, did our best as a team to help improve doing, you know, self odd reviews with a team. Um, we, had, uh, we didn't have a Division I team this semester. So people that played on the Division One team last semester but didn't join D2 helped coach us a bit. Okay, are you the one who kind of sets the charge for, I guess, set practice sessions then if you guys don't have a coach? Are you kind of the lead for that? Yeah, I, uh, so just as like the team captain, I took on a lot of roles in reorganizing the whole Overwatch from past semesters and getting things ha to happen, actually, so... Yeah, do, do you feel like having a... Sorry, Erica, just a question just came to my mind. Do you feel like having that coaching session with someone from the Overwatch League kind of influenced your strategy for leading the way in this upcoming season? Like, has your strategy for leading and organizing your team changed at all after talking with someone from an Overwatch League perspective? Yeah, it kind of made me realize, like, you know, maybe I'm going too into depth on little things that, you know, like, that could just be held off until we get the team on the the, the basics especially with just our skill rating and everything like that. We just needed to kind of focus on the basics. And once we have the basics down, so we can do some more of the more advanced stuff. Since Jacob almost stole my question, Marco, I know <laughs> it sounds like it, it sounds like you have a lot of pressure on your shoulders as a team captain, and especially since you don't have a coach. What are some things you're going to be looking for a coach that would help benefit your team? Honestly, um, so I, just as a coach, that I've coached in the past and, you know, looking for a coach, I guess I look for someone that not, that can kind of set a plan and have at least one backup for that and make sure that we're like 
I'd much rather be a one trick pony team than mm. a jack of all trades because it's just like I think that's what we've done in the past and before David coached us as well. We were kind of trying to, you know, jack of all trades it. And then we tried just instead, hey, let's just do rush. And that's what we're doing. And uh, it got better. It was unfortunate in the tournaments we played, but <laughs> um, but yeah, I, we definitely got a lot better on that rush. Yeah, well, I mean, if something works, something works. So follow-up question to that. So outside of the coaching world, like what do you feel are the next steps for your team? Is it to find, like you mentioned the 3K, 4K disparity, is it to find like 4K players or is it to groom the team that you guys currently have to get to that level or what's the next step? Well, so from what I know with uh, the tryouts for next semester, uh, because over summer we kind of slightly disband the teams. Um, we'll have full tryouts in the fall semester. Hopefully we can do that as soon as possible. Um, I'll be working to make sure that happens. But we should try and field as many teams as honestly we can. It's just fun. Um, apparently we used to hold almost four teams of Overwatch way back, uh, way back when, before I even started ASU. Um, so uh, honestly, I think we're going to have at least a D1 and a D2 next semester. Awesome. And then last question before we, we wrap up here, because we talked a little bit before recording that you are also like me, a tank main. God bless us. Um, yes. <laughs> and obviously we are the ones being impacted the most with Overwatch 2. So what are your what have you what are your anticipated thoughts about being the only tank against one other tank in a match? Um, so I, I won't lie, I'll definitely miss some of the synergy with tanks. I mean, with my tank right now on uh, the Overwatch team in the, at ASU, we would legitimately have a shatter bomb called just tank synergy because we we do it without calling it and it would hit you know most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's just uh, it's I'm kind of a little bit sad, but I'm looking forward to it because it's just gonna breathe a lot of life into the game and honestly, hopefully a, a lot more people join and play the game. Yeah. Time will tell. Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. it is still fun hopefully. to Fingers click crossed. on people with a giant head. <laughs> <laughs> One could hope. But yes. Marco, this has been so awesome. We really, really appreciate you coming on. And we wish uh, we wish you guys the absolute best in this upcoming season. Awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely.